Desde hace tiempo la palabra hacker es sinónimo de peligro. Un hacker creó un virus informático capaz de apoderarse de las cámaras web de sus víctimas con el objetivo de espiarlas. Bill Gates sufrió el ataque mediante internet de un hacker que difundió los números y códigos de sus tarjetas de crédito. Según los investigadores, José duplicaba las páginas web de bancos online. Los clientes ingresaban sus números de cuenta y contraseña y una vez en su poder, los utilizaría en beneficio propio. Si uno solo puede armar un desastre informático, imagínense lo que puede ocurrir en una reunión masiva de hackers. Esta es la única imagen que se tiene registrada de una multitud de casi 7.000 hackers que no quieren ser filmados. Algunos de ellos son los más temidos del mundo y conocen los secretos para abrir todos los sistemas. Las Vegas, la ciudad del pecado, recibe a la conferencia más temida y respetada del mundo de la tecnología. Te mostramos a Defcom, el otro lado de la informática. Antes de acreditarnos para ingresar a la conferencia hacker, los organizadores nos advirtieron. Ninguna persona puede aparecer filmada sin permiso explícito. Está absolutamente prohibido grabar multitudes. No cumplir con las reglas significa la expulsión inmediata y la confiscación del material. Y por último, una curiosidad. Los organizadores nos advierten que los hackers son más amenos cuando se les regala alcohol. Charla sobre cómo obtener una nueva identidad, charla sobre cómo abrir una caja fuerte, pero también charla sobre cómo encontrar las fallas de los sistemas para poder compartirlas y hacerlos más seguros. Esas son solo algunas de las cosas que pasan en Defcon. Esta es una de las primeras exposiciones que nos llama la atención. Un hacker explica el funcionamiento de las tarjetas que abren la puerta en los hoteles. La idea detrás, por supuesto, era aprender cómo funcionan, que se pueden copiar y también abrir a gusto. Mientras investigan cómo quebrar las barreras de seguridad, los hackers también se meten en problemas. Adam, we just saw your presentation. It was very impressive. Tell me how many years have you come to DEFCON to speak here? Uh, this is my 11th year, but I've only actually been speaking for, for two, the last two years. What's your experience as a hacker? For how many years have you been with computers? I've been working um, with computers since the late 70s, early 80s. So over 20 years now. And you're an expert hacker. You get into systems to try to see how they work and how they can be cracked. What's your area of expertise? Um, usually it's just noticing odd interactions between systems. I mean, what I, I'm very kind of security aware. So what happens is I'll notice something that shouldn't have happened and then see how far I can push it. And my particular interest is when people add new technologies onto old systems and they expand old systems without properly re-engineering them. So you get these unexpected interactions, which in most cases lead to unexpected security issues. Security by obscurity, so people use technologies that they think are difficult, but actually underlying it's very simple. So the data stored on a MagStripe card is, is just ones and zeros. And 
because it's sort of non-visible, they think they don't have to to um, to be very clever with the way they do it. And what I keep finding is that the the um, the control mechanisms are actually very very basic. And if you just take some time to understand them, you can bypass them. You can change the keys. You, as you say, you can make it open someone else's door. You feel as a hacker that is uh, the worst time to be a hacker now. I don't think it's the worst time, but you're right. I mean, it's again, it's wrong that that's happening. You know, it's important that people like us have the freedom to investigate these things because if we don't do it, who is? The only person who's going to do it is the bad guy. So, you know, if you don't have the good guys finding the same problems and exposing them, then nobody's going to be fixing them. Um, and I think it's important to, you know, stick your head above the parapet and, and say, well, I found a, a, a problem. Um, if they want to prosecute us for doing that, then so be it. We'll stand up in court and discuss it. You know, you, you keep referring to me as a hacker, but it's important to understand I'm a white hat hacker. That means I, I hack um, because I want to find the holes before the bad guys do and get them fixed. So we're on the same side. The problem is when they start to apply the law without looking at why things are being done, you can end up on the wrong side of the law, even though you're both actually on the same side. So the point about conferences like this is to get that dialogue going and get them to understand that there are two sides to the coin. You know, it would be like calling a locksmith a burglar because he can open a door. Well, yeah, he can, but he doesn't because his job is to open it when he needs to, not to go and steal your money. Same with us, you know, we break into things to prove that the manufacturer's claims about their security are not actually true. One major malfunction, so reporting for duty. En la fiesta hacker, además de las conferencias, también hay eventos donde compiten y miden sus fuerzas. El más prestigioso, llamado Capture the Flag, reúne a la elite del mundo hacker. Estamos en el cuarto de DEFCOM, donde se encuentran los hackers más profesionales de todo el mundo. Vamos a hablar con Chris, quien solo aceptó contestar muy pocas preguntas sobre de qué se trata lo que está haciendo en este momento en el evento Capture the Flag. Hi Chris, thanks for receiving us here, but tell me what's Capture the Flag. Uh, Capture the Flag is a uh, computer network security exercise in which uh, every team uh, has the job of both attacking and defending a, uh, a, a server on the network. How is it going this far? <laughs> We're having a, a bit of a tough time. Uh, we hope to uh, uh, do some work overnight that will maybe get us back in the game, but uh, we've had some uh, bad luck and uh, I'm afraid uh, not, not going as well as we'd hope. Why many of them just don't want to show their faces or just don't be on camera? Um, yeah, some prefer to remain anonymous. Uh, some prefer yeah, not, not to be out in the open with what they do. Uh, some prefer just to uh, enjoy DEF CON and not spend their, the entire conference in front of a computer screen. Dr. Gonzo, uno de los organizadores, aceptó contarnos sobre el funcionamiento del evento solo si preservábamos su identidad. What do you need to get here? Uh, so each of the teams has to qualify to get here uh, and play in the in the DEFCON game or in the Capture the Flag game here at DEFCON, and that means that uh, basically the uh, the teams have to do a qualification round, which occurs months ahead of time. So uh, for this competition, we did a qualifier about three months ago, and the qualifiers are basically a weekend event where we start on a Friday night around uh, 10 p.m and it runs straight through until uh, midnight on Sunday. These guys over here are the best hackers in the world? Absolutely, yeah, the folks here are the best ha hackers in the world. I mean, we, we uh, the group that runs this competition, we are continually impressed each year by the skills that are displayed by some of the team uh, teams that show up. Muchos hackers son fanáticos de las armas y por eso este año comenzó un nuevo concurso en DEFCOM para diseñar prototipos que pudieran apuntar y disparar sin la intervención humana. Otro evento principal en DEFCOM es el Lock Picking Contest, que consiste en abrir lo más rápido posible las cerraduras más complejas. Es un 
pros to both skill and uh, speed in, in, in terms of opening a lock. We're in our finals right now, and what the, these guys are doing is they're uh, trying to open this door uh, by open, or picking three locks with uh, manual lock picks and not using any of those magical toys that are out there today, but using manual lock picks, getting through the um, padlock, getting through the deadbolt, and getting through the doorknob. And, How hard is it? Um, well, these are turning out to be fairly difficult locks, uh, even though they were bought with the intention of being fairly easy. So that means the manufacturers are getting smarter on the locks as well. Um, our, our winner looks like it took about 26 minutes to open three of the locks. What's the prize? Uh, the prize is, the big prize is the black badge. La chapa negra es el máximo honor que puede portar un hacker en la conferencia. Significa que se destacó en alguna de las pruebas y que podrá volver siempre sin pagar la admisión. Desde hace algunos años el FBI organiza su propia charla dentro de DEFCOM. Ahí los hackers se acercan a conocer a los agentes de la agencia y también a escuchar ofertas laborales. Is a good place to hire people to recruit? Absolutely, there's good people here. There's people here, that, and that's another good reason that why we come, because we need people with the types of skills that they have, and we certainly recruit at every venue. How do you feel being around hackers? Um, it's an interesting group, and uh, you know, you stay close to your friends, closer to your enemies. You learn a lot. Uh, and law enforcement uh, doesn't have all the resources that it needs. So, and we're here gathering intel. We're here looking for uh, good people to come to work for us who haven't broken the law yet. And, uh, you know, even though this is, it looks like this is a uh, group of 6,000 uh, bad guys, they're not. You know, there's probably only a handful, a small portion of the uh, percentage of these folks that are actually uh, uh, bad guys. What do you think? There's much more specialists here than UEs? Or? I think there's only about 10% that are uh, uh, real hackers here, uh, you know. And uh, there's probably another 30% that, you know, are young enough and they haven't made up their mind or interested and don't know whether to go over the line or not. And the vast majority of these folks are uh, good guys. Have you ever suffered any attacks from Argentina? Uh, absolutely. So in the scope of international hackers, our hackers are out there rated? Uh, we don't rate them. They all suck. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a challenge, by the way. <laughs> no, don't come right. after us now. Todos los años los hackers juegan en Defcom a Spot de Fed o a encontrar al agente federal. Un divertimento que consiste en ubicar a los agentes del FBI y las agencias de inteligencia que se cuelan para espiarlos. Este año, además de buscar nuevos talentos, las agencias de seguridad propusieron un juego inverso. Encontrar a los principiantes entre los hackers, aquellos aspirantes sin talento, a los cuales despectivamente sus pares llaman lamers. Marathon. No, sir, I'm a Star Wars fan. <laughs> Number five. Have you ever gone to a family reunion to pick up checks? <laughs> Number six. You live in your parents' basement. Ahora llega el momento de la votación y los hackers tienen que decidir quién es el principiante. Number three. Al encontrar al principiante, lo condecoran con un regalo algo particular. Esta fiesta de los hackers también tiene sus eventos para reírse de cómo aquellos que no entienden los personifican. En esta exposición, el orador compiló producciones de Hollywood y la televisión donde los escritores sabían de cualquier cosa menos de informática. 
U.S. Cyberspace Force, he shouted from the keyboard, freeze. <laughs> First of all, he's shouting from the keyboard. I'm assuming he's shouting into his monitor. I'm gonna get the legal warrants from E Court. Time jump and E warrant again. Legal warrants, E warrant. Legal warrants, E warrant again. Your asses are gonna need skin transplants. Jay, your group should start browsing the online sex ports. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's not forget the virtual brothels. <risa> la ridiculización también vale para los mismos hackers. Esta es la pared de la vergüenza, es donde terminan todos los passwords y los nombres de usuarios de aquellos hackers que no supieron cuidar bien sus máquinas y se quisieron conectar a la red de Defcom, la red más peligrosa del mundo. ¡Viva Las Vegas! Es de noche en Las Vegas, los hackers dejaron las computadoras, pero la fiesta en Defcom no termina, porque ahora sigue en los penthouse del Hotel Riviera. Defcom tiene dos fiestas principales, el baile negro la primera noche y el blanco la segunda. Aunque el espíritu de la conferencia apunta a compartir información sensible, muchos hackers rechazan el estereotipo que se construyó alrededor suyo en los medios. Atención, no toque su televisor, no toque su televisor. Esto no es un simulacro. Me estoy metiendo en su televisor por medio de mi computer. Porque yo soy hacker, hacker, hacker. Basta de programas aburridos, basta. Satisfago todos sus deseos Por medio de la autopista informática Soy hacker y la vamos a pasar bomba Violencia Diversión Sexo Mujeres Sangre Informática Me están llegando pedidos Um, I I am one of the people that actually don't like the term hacker at all, mostly because the you know the news and media, not you guys in particular, but they've kind of taken over to a like negative or derogatory term, and so I'm kind of like against that. Uh, I think it's better to break it down as what you do best. Why do I come to DEF CON? I come to DEF CON for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one, uh, the talks are great, uh, you get to learn a lot. Uh, the other thing is that you get to see all your friends, uh, all the people that you talk to and converse with online. Uh, a lot of the people that I get to meet here, I'm working on projects online with. And the majority of hackers that I know are out there trying to protect the world and trying to keep the world a safer place. There are some who are criminals and are the, the cyber terrorists, but overall most people, that they know the difference between right and wrong. Como nosotros, también hay otros curiosos e iniciados que vienen a conocer un poco más del mundo de la seguridad informática. Actually, I went to a few seminars today and everything, and I'm actually surprised at what I've learned. What have you learned so far? Well, I've learned that it's actually incredibly frightening what people can do today. <laughs> for example, what what did you see? Well, for example, cloning credit cards and the phishing that uh, the phishing everybody knows about phishing on like email and going to websites, but I did not know that they could do it through phones. Eric tiene solo 19 años, pero se convirtió en una de las mayores promesas dentro del mundo hacker. ¿Haciendo qué? Abriendo cajas fuertes. Now, how do we manipulate this thing? Well, the wheels are imperfect. You're relying on the fact that the wheels are imperfectly made so that one of the wheels, in this case, is going to be bigger than the other. And when the gate in that wheel passes under the fence, that fence will be able to drop down just a little bit. You'll be able to hear or feel it dropping down. <laughs> How long have you been cracking safes? Well, I haven't been cracking safes very long, com you know, compared to how long I've been picking locks. Computer conference, but also has a lot of movements regarding picking locks and safes. Why is that? Well, locks, safes, they're all puzzles of some kind. You know, a computer program, to, to break into a computer program, find a, find a new vulnerability in a safe or find a new vulnerability in a computer program is intellectually more or less the same thing. You know, the difference is that we're working with mechanical components and they're working with electronic or 
you know, software components. It's the battle of wits. It's you versus the guy that designed it. Or you get to open all the locks that you got in front. I actually have two locks in my back that nobody in the world can open at the moment. You plan to make locks in the future that no hacker can open? <laughs> I don't think anyone can ever say that they make locks no one can ever open. Um, you can make locks that no one knows how to open, no one ha knows how to begin to think about opening. But you can't say that no one in the future will ever come up with an idea to open that lock. There's never say never, at least at DEFCON. Exactly. Pero tanto pánico, locura, alcohol y computadoras en Las Vegas tienen un responsable. Es este, más conocido como la tangente negra el fundador de la conferencia. Was, I was supposed to help a friend organize a party. Then all of a sudden, his family moved out of the town and I was left holding the bag. I had to organize a party by myself. So once that happened, I decided to go crazy, invite all my friends, all the pirates and hackers and freakers I knew, and throw it in Vegas. Uh, I'd never been to Vegas and I figured if it failed, I could sit by the pool and have a pina colada. Tell me about the scene. What do you remember about it? Oh, it was a kind of a really strange, uh, maybe 110 people. We had just one room and we'd invited a bunch of security experts and just whoever showed up. And so we got civil libertarians and attorneys and we got hackers, freakers, we got criminals. I mean, we got everybody together and they just all sort of found out and heard about it just randomly. How old were you then? I was about uh, right out of college, about 22, I think, at the time. And I was working a full-time job out of college and organizing DEF CON. Do you consider yeah. yourself a hacker in which way in which sense? Yeah, back then I was I was much more of a hacker. Um, now I guess I'm more of a security professional. You know, it's like I've kind of explored the hacking world, kind of know all the players and how it's done. And a lot of things have changed. You know, back then there weren't really a lot of laws against anything. You know, phone systems, a lot of them were new. The internet was new. There's a lot of stuff that was just pure exploration. But now you don't have to do a lot of that. You can just buy books and read about it online. And, and so a lot of the original incentives are gone, you know. En DEFCON, por supuesto, hay tecnología de computadoras y, como no, no iba a haber un argentino. Siempre hay un argentino. Norberto, contame un poco hace cuánto llegaste acá. Llegamos hace una semanita casi. Sí, hay gente que dice que son los más peligrosos del mundo, que se reúnen acá. Sí. ¿Vos estás de acuerdo? Sí, hay gente que es peligrosa. De hecho, prender una notebook acá es un peligro. Es, es de, de verdad un peligro. Así que no, hay gente muy, muy grosa. Eh, varias charlas de, esta, de, de, de estas personas... Eh, Estaban mostrando unas técnicas que en mi vida me hubiera imaginado que, que iban a ser posibles y bueno, lo mostraron en vivo, de verdad. ¿En qué estado estamos los argentinos en comparación a lo que vemos acá? Estamos, comparativamente con la gente que está mostrando técnicas nuevas, estamos a la par. O sea, en Argentina hay hackers de verdad buenos, de verdad buenos, y hay profesionales todavía mejores. Eh, no salen tanto a la luz quizás porque estamos en Sudamérica, pero hay mucha gente que conozco de Argentina mismo que vino a dar charlas acá y, y son de verdad aplaudidos. O sea, hay gente muy buena en Argentina. Son los hackers, inteligentes, profesionales, competitivos y contraculturales. Genios que para hacer el bien o el mal solo necesitan de una computadora.